Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to replace your main shaft seal on your PB4 booster pump for your Polaris 380. And the way you can tell that the main shaft seal is bad is if you look inside here where the shaft is, it's since dried out, but you can see that um, here's the shaft right here. And if you see water going through this little drain hole right here and dripping on the ground, like you see the hole right there, you know that's how it's bad. Um, just so you know, this pump in particular is an older model. It's a 1995 model. If I go over here and show you the uh, sticker, you can see 1995 is marked off there. And just go through a couple of uh, quick safety things. Um, if you're going to work on one of these, obviously make sure you, there's no power going to your pump. Make sure it's completely disconnected. And if you're going to work on this after it was just running, um, chances are the motor is going to be very hot. So it, when you shut it off, give it at least, I'd say, maybe just to be safe, give it a half hour to cool down. Then you should be able to disconnect it, carry it over to wherever you need it to go. And in this particular repair, we're also going to replace the uh, hose connectors. That'll be after we take care of the main seal. That's the main part of this job. And you can see here, here's the... Um, Here's the uh, shaft O-ring, here's the two seals, and here's the housing get ha or housing O-ring, if you want to call it that, that we're going to replace. So let's uh, show you what you'll need for this type of job. Okay, and here's just an overview of some of the tool tools you can find useful. I have here a rub rubber hammer, I have a wrench, I'm a 5 16 nut driver. An adjustable wrench. Um, a half inch wrench, um, a couple of flathead screwdrivers, and in this particular set of channel lock pliers I have the teeth uh, tape, uh, wrapped in electrical tape, and I'll show you why when we get to that point. And now this is pretty important. This is uh, lubricant for your O-rings. Now, if you're going to lubricate your O-rings, O-rings are typically made of rubber, okay? So only use silicone lubricant on, o -ring, on rubber O-rings. Don't use WD-40. And don't use grease because those will make your O-ring wear out a lot faster because it's a petroleum product and it can fail like very quickly. So those are the only types of things you should use for your O-ring. Okay, so now the first part of the repair is to get off this main front cover. Um, this is also called a volute, I believe. So if you hear that word, that's what this is. And I forgot to mention before, it's a good idea to get yourself like a little container or bowl just so any loose nuts or bolts you have don't go flying everywhere and you don't lose them. So the first thing first is to get off this front cover. So the way to do that is, let's go ahead and turn this around so I can show you the back a little bit better. Okay, and now, again, with, with your half-inch wrench, you want, to, uh, you want to loosen these nuts. Now, I kind of like to loosen these in a similar way that you work on things in your car, and that is, I like to go, like, alternate size. I don't go in a circle. I go from this one to that one then like this one to that one, that's kind of hidden, then this one to that one, kind of like that. So we'll start by loosening this one, like so. Now we'll loosen this one next, just like that. Now we'll do this one. And now this other one down here, which is kind of hidden. There it is, that one's loosened now. Then go over to this one. Get a little bit loose, or there we go. And now loosen this one. Okay? Now go ahead and take all these off by hand, and the front cover should come off. Okay, all the nuts have been removed, and now we're going to turn the pump around again and get the, and get the front cover off. Now, if this was just running like mine was, you're probably going to see some uh, water come out of the front, which is normal. If it's kind of hard to get off, just give it a couple of taps with the rubber hammer. And there we go. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Okay, so now you have your impeller here, which you will have to remove. But the first thing we'll do is you'll probably see your old housing O-ring right along here. Let's get that off. And you, and you can discard this because we're not going to be re reusing it. Okay. Now, the next thing to do is to unscrew this impeller. But as you can see, if you, if you try to unscrew it, it, the motor shaft just turns with it. So what we're going to have to do is turn the pump around. Now, in order to access the... Um, in order to access the uh, main uh, motor shaft, uh, we're going to have to remove this plate here. It looks like someone's gone into here with a screwdriver before. So you just kind of got to tab in here with a screwdriver and just kind of pry it off just like that. Now you can see this, uh, this, shaft, is, this shaft is pretty rusty, but um, as long as it turns freely, and it does, doesn't make any noise, you should be okay. So now what we're going to have to do is 
we're going to have to take um, these these adjustable uh, this adjustable wrench, clamp it onto the flat portions of your of your motor shaft, which are right there, and try to get it on there the best you can to, to hold it in place as as tight as you can. Now, with that as tight as, with that as tight as you can make it, take another pair of channel locks. This one doesn't have the tape on it, but that's okay. We don't need it for this instance. And you're going to try to hold the wrench in place like this. Um, that's too loose. Let me make it a little tighter. There we go. Okay. Just like that, you want to hold the wrench. Then you want to grab the outer portion of this impeller like this and try to give it as good of a turn as you can. It'd be a little difficult, but... Ah, there we go. Okay. Take this off. Take the wrench off. And now, as you can see, the impeller's coming right off. Just unscrews like that. There you go. And here's the first portion of your seal. Okay. And now... Now we are going to have to take off this bracket, like this main bracket right here. I'll show you how to do that. And then the next thing you want to take off are these four bolts right here. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what the exact size of these bolts are, but um, I can tell you that they're larger than uh, was it? they're larger than half an inch, but smaller than three quarters of an inch. So anywhere within there. And then you'll also notice that the bottom ones attach the motor to the to the support here, to the supporting platform. So you want to be careful when you remove these because the motor could be a little heavy, but not too bad. So you just want to make sure that you support the motor correctly when you take these four bolts off. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's take off this uh, main bracket here. And start with whichever one you want. I think I'll start with this bottom one. Just get it nice and loose. Like so. And be careful when you pick this up because you don't want to have any pressure points on, on any part of this. Oh, this one's on good. Ugh, there we go. This one's on really tight. And again, you want to be sure that you carefully support this motor when you take these off because of um, because it, 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 because it connects directly into the support below. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen these, and then uh, we'll we'll get the motor off. All right, guys. Now, as you take off the last one, you want to um, hold the motor, like give it some support, and it should help this come out a little bit easier. You can see it is. Okay, there you go. Now the bracket should slide right off. And you can actually take the uh, motor right off the uh, support now. We'll save. We'll save that for now. Try to get the rest. Of, try to get this bracket off. Give it some turns if you have to to try to get it off. Maybe a little bit difficult. Give it some shakes, like so. Ah, there we go. And so here's your bracket, and here's your other part of the seal right here. And also right here is your O-ring for your motor shaft. And I don't know if you can see, but this O-ring has completely deteriorated, so this is more than likely the cause of why the pump was leaking, because this O-ring definitely has just had it, so. And let me get it off here. There we go. Yeah. See that? Things like completely falling apart, so this more or less was probably what caused the leak to happen in the first place. And I would like to point out to you that your lower bolts are going to be longer than your upper bolts for the bracket, so just remember that, okay? The longer, the, the, the longer ones are on the bottom, the shorter ones are on the top. Now we can start removing the old seal from the uh, from the impeller and from the bracket. Now, it's a good idea to take a picture of the way everything is set up, just so that way when it comes time to reassemble, you're not like, uh, where did these go? You know what I mean? Okay. So on the first one on the impeller, with this is the one with the wide end, you can just uh, simply take it off like so, reaching out with a screwdriver and just kind of pry it out. Now. Only the ceramic piece came out, so you want to make sure that you also get the um, the rubber portion out, just like so. There we go. Okay. Now on the on the bracket, uh, what you want to do is you want to turn it. Um, I guess you can call this upside down. You want to turn it like this, and you want to try to tap out this metal part to get the old seal out of it. So with the screwdriver and with one of the channel locks. We'll just put the screwdriver on the seal here, on the metal portion, 
and just try to tap it out like so. That's in there good. There we go. And as you can see, here's the bracket, and here's your old seal. So now let's go ahead and put the new ones in. All right guys, as a first step, a good thing to do is just to take the impeller and the bracket and just kind of clean the inside of it a little bit. Just, you know, if there's any dirt or debris in there, it'd be good to get it out. It'll just help the seals go in a little bit easier. Make sure it's all free of dirt. Same thing with the bracket, go inside here. And just make sure everything is all clean. Nothing's, uh, nothing else remains in there. You want to make sure that everything is as clean as can be. And now we can start, go ahead and install the new seals. On the impeller, we're going to install the, uh, the seal with the little ceramic piece on it. Now, if you're going to install this, when you put it in, just put it in like so. And then when you want to fit the rest in, um, use a rag or whatever and push down carefully on the ceramic. Don't use your fingers because you don't want to get fingerprints on the seal. You just want it to seed in there and want to make sure it fits in. And as you can see, that fit right in there. So let's go ahead and do the bracket now. Now for the bracket, um, here's the bracket seal right here. With the bracket facing up like this, you want the metal part of the seal to go down, like so. And the, this is going to be a tight fit. Now the best way to get this on would be to take like a one inch section of pipe, put it on the seal like so, and just gently tap it in until the, the metal piece seats all the way down. Okay, we got the uh, bracket seal in now. We have the impeller seal in, so we'll leave those alone for now. Let's put those aside. And now what we'll do is, just cap this for now. Oh, whatever, good enough. We will put the new O-ring on, on the motor shaft. Now, here's the motor right here. And you want to, you want to take your, here's the little O-ring, make sure you don't lose this. Just get a tiny bit of, um, of lubricant, just a small amount, and just put it all over the seal, just so it's all nice and coated, like so. Okay. Now, you want to take the seal and move it over the motor shaft, like so, and you're going to try to get it on this little groove right here, this front groove. So you may have to just kind of stretch it over a little bit, just a bit like that, and there you go. New shaft O-ring is right in place. Okay, so both sears, both sears, that's funny. Both seals are in place. So now let's go ahead and put everything back together. All right, now let's start by putting the bracket back on top of, back on the motor. Um, just so you know, the top of the motor is where the start, where's where the one capacitor is, which is right here, and the top of this bracket is where this little point is. So you know exactly where it needs to go. So you're going to carefully try to slide the um, shaft through the new seal and a little bit of lubricant on the o-ring should help like so oh that slid on very easily actually okay so now that this is on if you want now go ahead and reinstall the upper bolts for the uh, bracket now don't tighten them all the way just make them so they hold the bracket in place now if you remember the top ones were the shorter ones so let's go ahead and screw those in Again, just make them finger tight. Don't, don't, don't tighten them down all the way yet because we still got to put the motor back on the uh, on the support platform. Like so. Now that we have the bracket back on, both upper bolts are installed. We're now going to reinstall the motor onto its support. So let's go ahead and put it over here. Let's put the motor. Now, the way it works is this bracket goes behind. This, plat this support. So the bolts go in here, then it's the platform, then it's, then it's the bracket behind here. Put it on here like so, just like that. Now you want to get your longer bolts now, which are right here. And you want to see if I can turn this around the best I can. I am aware that part of the platform is broken here as you can see, but that's okay. These are easy enough to replace, and, and this motor is still stable, so I'm not too concerned. 
but for now let's go ahead and, and reinstall these. Got to get into the right position, just like that. And you also want to get the other one too, just so you have that started as well. Like this, okay. There you go. And now just move the motor around and try to get these tightened the best you can, just so everything's in and the motor gets supported properly. Okay, now you can start tightening them all the way down, like I did. Now, when you tighten these down, this is like a plastic-like material, okay? You don't want to go too tight on these, okay? Tighten it up until you feel it get tight, then when it stops turning, just stop there. Don't try to force any further. Once it stops, it's good. Same thing with this one over here. Keep going until it stops. Okay, and it stopped right there. I'm not going to tighten it any further, all right? And do the same on the bottom. That one's stopping right there. Not, not going to go any further. And the same on the fourth one. Okay? Now we shall reinstall the impeller. Now you want to take the impeller, make sure, make sure the seal is all nice and clean, and you just want to thread it on carefully. You can thread it on easily first before the motor shaft starts turning on it with it. I'll hold it in the back with my hand, just like that. Okay. Make it as tight as you can. Okay. Now comes the part where you got to hold the motor shaft with the wrench again. Now, tightening it isn't as bad as loosening it, but you still want to be careful. So, I'm going to take that adjustable wrench once again. I closed it. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> and just get it on the flat part of the uh, motor shaft. Like so. Okay. Now, I'm going to hold the wrench with the uh, pliers, or the vice grip pliers, whatever you want to call them. Just like so, make it one level longer. Okay. Hold on to it. And now give the impeller just some turns until it stops turning, okay? Then once it stops turning, just give it like a quick nudge, like, like so. Okay, like that. Don't make it any tighter. You should be all set. Okay. And now we can remove the uh, adjustable wrench. Let's go ahead and reinstall the, the uh, motor shaft cap, just like so. Just kind of tap it on there. You can use the, uh, the rubber hammer if you want, just to get it on there completely, like so. Okay. Okay, now the next thing you want to do is you want to install the new housing O-ring that we have. Let's just take our rag and just quickly go around the sides here, make sure it's all clean of anything. Okay, now we'll take our new O-ring right here and we'll get that same lubricant and just uh, put, a, put a nice amount around it because uh, not only does it help it seal better but also extends the life of the O-ring a little bit and that's always important. Now the one that we had on here wasn't leaking but it was 19 years old and um, and we, we, have, we got a fresh new one with the new seal, so why not, you know, just save ourselves some trouble, put a new O-ring on while, while, we have the, while everything's easily accessible. Okay. Now, we are going to slide it around. Maybe a little bit of a tight fit, but that's okay. Just like so. so make, sure, make sure it fits all around. There's like this like a little rim here. Make sure it fits all around there as well as, as well as it should, like so. And the new O-ring is on. Okay, now we will go ahead and we shall install the uh, cover. Okay, now to install the cover, have everything you need here. And uh, make sure each one of these bolts are still in place, like they should be. And just kind of guide it on. Make sure everything goes through like it should. That went on nice and easily, so that's usually a good sign. Okay. Fix that. All right. Now let's turn this around. Like so. Okay. And now if you remember, we have our uh, six nuts that we got to put on a half inch. So I have them in the little thing here. Now again, I'm just going to make them hand tight for the time being. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tighten them down completely. I just want to put them on here so they're on. I don't want them to be completely tight just yet.
Now, once again, when you tighten these up, I like to go in a pattern like this. Again, I don't go in a circle. I do like this one, then that one, then this one, then that one, and then that one and that one. A, a pattern like that. I think it's called a star pattern, but if I'm wrong, just someone just let me know, okay? So again, half inch. Now you can start tighten, tightening them, them down. Start with this one. And again, just make them snug. Don't make them so tight that you can't turn them anymore. That's, uh, because again, we're, we're dealing with like plastic here, so, or, or fiberglass, one or the other. So you don't really want to, you don't want to over tighten these because that can cause damage. Okay, here. Okay, that's, that, that one is secure. Let's do this one again. Okay, that's snug. That's snug, and then we'll do this one down here. I know a ratchet would be good here, but unfortunately I don't have one on me right now, so... Okay, that's snug. Oh, uh, this one over here. Okay. That's snug. Now we'll do the uh, hidden one over here. Like this. And again, that there's a six of these. Okay, that's snug. Now we'll do this one up here. Okay, I think that's all of them. Okay, so replacing the seals is complete. Now I can show you about putting on the new hose connectors. Okay, so here's the new hose connector right here, all right? And now, with anything that's threaded, and, there, and when there's going to be water pressure, you want to add some Teflon tape to the threads just to give it a better seal, hopefully prevent leaks. So now, the way you do this is, this screws in clockwise. It's a standard thread. Okay. And then here's your Teflon tape. Let's take this out. And then the way you want to do this correctly is, you don't want the tape to be, like, ripped off when you screw it in. So what you do is, start the tape here, okay? With the threads facing towards you, you want to start it on the threads and then put it cl on clockwise. See how I'm turning this thing clockwise to get the tape on? That's how you want to do it for something you want to put on clockwise. And you can put this around a couple or three times just to ensure that um, everything's nice and uh, it has nice, nice thick Teflon on it and hopefully it seals correctly. You just want to make sure of that. Okay. I'll go back to the front here a little bit. All right, that should be good enough. Now you can just rip it off right there, like so. Okay, and you have it all nice and taped up. Actually, you know what? Let me get a little bit more on this end here. That might not be a bad idea, just to be safe. Keep it off away from the hole so you don't block any water flow. Okay, yeah, there we go. Now, you want to screw it in like so, just like this. Make sure it catches first. Okay? And just go ahead and screw it in like so. And now, remember when I had the, um, what do you call it? Remember when I had the, uh, the vice grips with the, um, with the tape on it? This is why. So we can tighten this down first by hand. Now you want to take the vice grips. And the tape will prevent will prevent you from getting any damage on these um, areas here. Now, I'm pretty sure putting some marks on this isn't going to damage it. But just for peace of mind, I like knowing that I didn't damage any part of this when I put it back together. So I'm going to tighten this all the way down like so. And you can see it's not leaving any marks whatsoever on it. Tape is holding on okay. Okay, so I'm going to tighten this all down. Then I'm going to get to this front part here. And just like with the other one, with the threads facing towards you, standard thread again, wrap this with the Teflon tape in the clockwise direction. So let's go ahead and tie this back up, like so. Put it here. Okay, and there we go. So, 
All the connectors are back together and the pump is all reassembled. So now we are ready to go put it back to the pool equipment and give it a test. All right guys, the, uh, the pool pump and the booster pump have been running for a couple minutes now. Uh, you, you may still see some water there, but that's just residual water from when I reconnected the hoses and you know, some water came out. But if you'd like some proof, I'll go right over here and I'll reach underneath where that uh, drain hole was, right, right under here. Put my middle finger and my index finger on it. And if you look, nothing. Totally dry. We'll do that again. All underneath here, down where the drain hole is. And we'll have another look. Nothing. So, the seal has been fixed and there is no more leaks. So, I hope this video was of use to anyone who needs to replace that seal. I hope uh, the video was a good tutorial for you or a how-to. And I hope you enjoyed. As usual, guys, thank you very much for watching and take care.